A long time ago, in a rice field in Japan, a good, honorable young man named Musai was hard at work. He inherited the field when his father passed away, and he worked hard to provide for his mother, who lived with him. One day, as he was tending the field, he saw a beautiful crane in the sky. He watched it fly, high and proud, when suddenly an arrow struck it. The crane fell into his field where he rushed to see it. When he got to the screaming crane, he saw the arrow stuck in its back. Who would harm the crane? Please let me help you. The crane looked at Musai and in the moments after bowed to him. Musai gently and quickly removed the arrow and backed away. The crane bowed again and attempted to fly but had trouble standing. The young man helped the magnificent bird onto its feet and a moment later it took off. The crane circled overhead and cried out before flying away. Musai thought about the crane for the rest of the afternoon as he returned to work, and in the evening he told his mother about what had happened. She was very pleased to hear he helped the bird and told him the spirits would smile upon this moment. Many weeks passed, and Musai continued his simple life as he always had, until one evening as the sun was setting, his mother came out to see him. Musai? Yes, mother? Is everything all right? Yes, but we are losing light. It is time to come in. I will draw your bath and prepare dinner. In a moment, mother. I still have so much work to do. There is nothing you can do here in the night. Still, mother. Father left me his field, and I must do all I can to support you. The field will be here tomorrow for you, just as it always was for your father. You are too good a son. I am so worried that we will not earn enough to survive the winter. We have lived through many hard winters, Musai. What is one more? Now come inside. Yes, mother. His mother went inside and found a young, beautiful woman waiting in the doorway. The young woman bowed deeply to greet her and was asked why she had come to the house. The young woman told her she wished to marry Musai. His mother smiled and asked her to sit down as he would be in soon. She also asked her how long they knew each other, to which the woman replied, they hardly knew each other at all, but she had admired him for some time. Musai, meanwhile, watched the sunset in silence before going in. The women rose to greet him. You have a visitor, it seems, Musai. Hello. Good evening. Musai bowed deeply to the beautiful woman. Mother, who is this honorable woman, and how has she come to this miserable hut? Musai, you are a lovely young man. But as lovely as you are, you do not have a wife. I have surely been spoiled by you, but I am not a substitute. You are not unknown in this area. Your virtues of obedience, filial reverence, fidelity, and politeness have not gone unnoticed, it seems. This sweet woman knows of your reputation and has loved you at a distance for some time. She has come here today to ask you if she may become your wife. But without your consent, I could not answer her proposal. What do you think about it? I have never seen you before. How do you know me? Forgive me, but you have seen me before. I fell in love with you after you helped me. I have helped you? Yes. I have watched and asked about you since then, and have grown to love the kind, gentle man you are. Please excuse me for asking this, but are you of noble birth? Your clothes and grace are like nothing we have here, and surely you must have mistaken me for someone else. If I had helped you once, I would not have forgotten. I am not mistaken. Will you do me the honor of marrying me? I am worried. If I should gratify your desire, how will you bear the poverty to which we are accustomed? Will you be patient when you have to suffer hunger? The winters here are long and hard. We often have very little to eat. Poverty and hunger can quickly destroy love and happiness. So often, it lasts only a little while as something to pass the time until bitterness and regret replace it. It would surely break my heart to see this face show gloom and sorrow. Have no fear. If you do not consent to marry now, please allow me to stay here as a guest. Surely that will help drive your fears away. Mother, do you consent? Yes. Then it is settled. Stay here with us and we will host you as best we can. Please know that there will be hardships. Our crop has not been good this season, and we have very little money. If ever you wish to leave, tell me, and I will take you from this place. The woman bowed to him. Now, let me run your bath. It did not take long for Musai to return the girl's affections, and soon they were married. 
The woman did all she could to help out with the home, and no matter what happened, she stayed in positive spirits. As autumn fell, Musai began to harvest the crop and realized how little there would be to get them through winter. That night, he told his family the news. Musai, what is wrong? Our crops have failed. We have no food and no money to pay our taxes. What will we do? We do not need to worry ourselves. I can spin a cloth that has never been seen in our land. If you will build me a separate room, I can weave it. My love, a second room? That is so much to ask. I know it is. But I cannot weave here or make the fine pattern of red and white except when I am alone and all is silent. If I have this room, the money we need will flow in. Musai. How will the money flow in? Please, I cannot say more. You must trust me. I will build you your room. The next morning, he set out to build his wife's private room. When it was finished, she disappeared almost immediately behind its doors. What do you think she is doing in there? Musai, let her alone. You must learn to trust her and let her have her secrets. I do trust her, mother. I am just curious, that is all. All will be explained in time, I am sure. Now, please sit down and I will make us tea. The fields, mother. There is nothing that can be done for them this year. We will have to trust what our wife and daughter produces will bring us the money we need. Yes. Several days later, his wife emerged from the room with a bolt of woven fabric, shimmering as pure as fresh snow. Throughout the fabric was a beautiful crimson thread that intensified the purity of the unmarked whiteness. Musai and his mother were struck silent. Here is the fabric I promised. This is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my life. What do you call it? It doesn't have a name, Musai. There is none other in the world like it. But it must have a name. I want to take this to the daimyo, but he will not buy it if he does not know what it is called. Then tell him its name is White Crane's Down Cloth. Thank you. Musai took the fabric to the daimyo after his wife had woven it and was paid well for it. The snowy fabric was then made a gift to the empress, who was so taken with it she gave the weaver 1,000 pieces of silver. This money allowed Musai and his family a comfortable existence through the winter and beyond, so much so that when the next spring came, Musai did not tend the rice fields, and by autumn they were again in need of food and money. Musai asked his lovely wife for more of the rich fabric, and she was willing, but reminded him that she must be left alone in silence. Musai. Yes, mother? You must leave her be. I want to watch her. She asks to be let alone. She wishes to do her work in private. You must respect that. Why? A woman has her secrets, Musai. I don't like that she has secrets, mother. Go spend your afternoons in the rice field, Musai. You have not spent a day in them this year. They are overgrown and in desperate need of attention. Why should I toil in the mud for a crop that does not produce? when our fortunes wait on just the other side of that wall. What has happened to my hard-working son? Has silver changed you all that much? The silver allowed us a tidy living. Is that not preferable to what we had before? Let her be, lest you ruin a good thing. Be mindful of what you have. I don't know how I have what I have. I should be allowed to know. I want to watch her. She said not to. Is it through some ill-gotten means she receives it? She saved us. We owe her this privacy. Will you leave her be? Yes, mother. Come with me outside. I will be right there. Just a peek. Musai moved to the paper partition and silently made a small peephole by wetting it with his tongue. Inside the room, he watched his wife transform into the crane he saved so long ago. He watched her bend over the spinning wheel and pull Silky down from her breast. He watched her twine and twist it into a fine thread, and from time to time she would press the thread to her heart and her blood would dye the strands. He watched her weave this magnificent thread for some time. Eventually, his mother came in and watched him disappointedly. Musai, it is time. Yes, I'm coming. The crane wife was startled by the sound of her husband, and she looked to the wall. There she saw the hole and transformed back into her human form. She threw open the door and looked at her shocked husband. You are the crane. The crane was as shocked as he was, and after a brief moment, she ran from the house and took to the sky, leaving Musai and his mother forever. 
She asked you to leave her alone, Musai, and you could not trust her. She has left us because of selfishness. Musai. I couldn't help myself. I had to know. I know you did. The rice fields need tending. Yes, mother. <laughs>